talk today about a number of gas laws. And though I'm going to reference the name of the gas law, like the first one we'll talk about will be Boyle's Law, you don't need to know those names in particular, but you will need to know the relationships. So the first one that we're going to talk about is Boyle's Law, which is a relationship between pressure and volume. And when we talk about the relationship between pressure and volume, we're assuming the temperature doesn't change, because temperature will also affect the behavior of a gas. So if I have this water bottle, which is empty now, and I squeeze it, I am decreasing the volume. What happens to the pressure inside the container? I'm sure you've all experienced that as this happens, if someone were to pop the cap off, the cap would go shooting off because the pressure has increased. So when we have a decrease in volume, it's going to lead to an increase in pressure. And the reason why is pressure is molecules colliding with the walls of the container. If I have a smaller volume, that means more molecules are colliding with any given part of the container wall. When one goes up and the other goes down, we call this an inverse relationship. So another way I can express this is pressure is proportional to 1 over volume, the alpha symbol meaning proportional to. If I were looking at it graphically, P versus V, when we have an inverse relationship, the graph looks something like that. So as pressure gets higher and higher and higher, the volumes can get lower and lower and lower, but I can never get this volume actually to zero because the molecules themselves have a finite volume. Similarly, if I increase the container more and more and more, the pressure will get lower and lower and lower but it'll never reach zero. So we have an inverse relationship looking something like that. Another way that this law is expressed is as P1 V1 equals P2 times V2. Whenever we use a formula that has something on both sides of the equation, like pressure or volume, we have to make sure that we're in the same units. So if one pressure is an ATM, the other one has to be an ATM, and so on. We're going to talk now about Charles' Law and then Guy Lussac's Law before we do some practice problems. Charles' Law is the relationship between volume and temperature, assuming a constant pressure. So a constant pressure means we have a container that can expand. A good example of an expandable container would be like a balloon or, um, I don't know, a bag of potato chips. When we increase the temperature on a gas, it makes the molecules move faster and faster, which means if we have an expandable container, those molecules are colliding with the walls of the container harder and are able to push it outward. So whenever we have an increase in temperature, we're going to have an increase in volume. When they both increase together or both decrease together, a decrease in temperature begets a decrease in volume, we have what's known as a direct relationship. And if I look at volume compared to temperature, we have an increase in a direct relationship like that. Another way we can express this is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. In this formula, Volume can be any units, but temperature must be Kelvin. And in all of our gas formulas, temperature is going to have to be in Kelvin. So we need to make sure we convert it before we do any problems. The third gas law, Guy Lussac's law, relates pressure and temperature using a container of constant volume. So this is some sort of rigid container. A good example would be a steel can of spray paint or something like that. If I increase the temperature, molecules will move faster and they will collide with the walls of the container harder. And if they don't have anywhere to go, they're going to give you an increase in pressure within that container. This is why it's foolish to throw a can of spray paint into the fire. Heating it up is going to make it explode. We have another direct relationship where pressure is directly proportional to temperature. And this law can also be written as P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. 
This is going to move us into what is known as our combined gas formula. The combined gas formula, or the combined gas law, is going to allow us to look at pressure, volume, and temperature all at once. P1, V1, over T1 equals P2, V2, over T2. In this formula, pressure and volume, any units as long as they match. In other words, millimeters of mercury here, millimeters of mercury here, or ATM here, ATM there. Liters, liters, or milliliters, milliliters. But once again, temperature must be in Kelvin. Now we're going to take a look at a practice problem. Here's a sample problem. A gas occupies 600 milliliters at 70 degrees Celsius. We want to find the new temperature if the volume expands to 1.1 liters. So going through and identifying my variables, 600 milliliters, that's a volume. I'm going to call that V1. And that goes with this temperature. We're going to find the new temperature if the volume expands to 1.1 liters. See how pressure isn't mentioned? If pressure isn't mentioned, we assume it's constant. And it disappears from the combined gas law. So what we're working with becomes V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Before I plug stuff into this formula, I need to take a close look at my units. So V1 is 600 milliliters. T1 is 70 degrees Celsius. V2 is 1.1 liters. T2 we're looking for. So first of all, the first thing I notice is my volumes aren't in the same units. I need to either convert this to liters or that to milliliters. I'm going to choose to convert 600 milliliters to 0.6 liters. Next, before I plug in temperature, it has to be in Kelvin. Even if I eventually want it in Celsius, it has to be in Kelvin when I plug it in. So to convert that to Kelvin, I'm going to add 273 to it. 70 plus 273 is 343. Now I'm ready to plug in V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. To solve this, 1.1 times 343 divided by 0.6 gives me T2 to be 629 Kelvin. I was asked to find it in Celsius. So in order to convert it back to Celsius, I need to subtract 273 from it. Giving me 356 point, yeah, 356 degrees Celsius as my answer. Example two, a balloon has a volume of 4.1 liters at zero degrees Celsius and 1.1 ATM. We're going to find the pressure if it's compressed to 3 liters and heated to 30 degrees Celsius. Now we are dealing with pressure, volume, and temperature all in the same problem. Which means I need to identify all of these variables. A balloon has a volume of 4.1 liters at 0 degrees Celsius and 1.1 atm. Find the pressure if it's compressed to 3 liters and heated to 30 degrees Celsius. Before I plug in, I'm going to check my units here. Volume is in the same units. Temperature is in the same units, but I can't plug in Celsius. So this will be equal to 273 Kelvin. This is equal to 303 Kelvin. Now I'm ready to plug into the combined gas law. One point one times four point one over two seventy three equals P two, which is what I'm looking for, times three liters over three oh three Kelvin. One point one times four point one 
times 303 divided by 273 divided by 3 gives me pressure 2 to be equal to 1.67. I need to ask myself what in units is that in? If the other pressure was an ATM, this pressure was an ATM. The question didn't tell me what units to find pressure in, so I can stop right here and just note that it's 1.67 ATM. If it had asked me to find it in TOR or KPA, I would have had to convert units afterwards. 